What's going on everybody? Glad to have you here. In today's video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be making my own colorful silicone rubber fins like these. I really enjoyed this process and I learned a lot. Hopefully you will too. So get comfortable and enjoy the video. All right, let me bring you up to speed on what I've done for this little experiment so far. I drew out a fin shape and it's basically perfectly symmetrical. Uh, the idea on that is that it can't really be installed upside down. So it makes a good universal fin design. I only did one side because for this experiment, that's all we're gonna need. And then I basically took all of the clay that I've got and I rolled it out flat and then pressed this several times into it so that I had basically a sheet of half molds to work with. That way we can play around with different uh, color options and different um, ideas and see what we can come up with. All right, I just kind of wanted to go over some of the materials that we're gonna be using in this experiment. Of course, we're gonna need some silicone rubber and um, we're gonna use this Let's Resin silicone rubber because that's what I have. Uh, this is what I've been using to make my molds. I don't know that this is necessarily the best for fin making, uh, but that's okay, this is just an experiment. I also got a whole bunch of different colors of silicone rubber pigment. These are specially formulated for silicone rubber. These are concentrated, so a little bit will go a long way, but we've got a ton of colors of that to play with. A while back, I also got some of this mica powder this particular kind is a color shifting mica powder. Uh, I had originally got it for mixing in with my resin, but I think it would be really cool to try out on this experiment as well. 
And then of course I've got a whole bunch of different colors of glitter over here that we could experiment with as well. Anyway, we got quite a few different things to try and we'll see what kind of cool things we can come up with. Okay, first off here, let's pour up a little bit of silicone to play with. Oops, 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 just a little bit over it, that's all right. I'm gonna want two colors here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pour some of this over into another cup. But let's put a little bit of this uh, mango yellow color in there. Probably just one drop of this uh, green color. Oh wow. That actually came really close to what I'm wanting. It's not quite as bright, but it's not bad. Okay, well, we're gonna stop right there with adding colors, because this is just sort of an example. I'm just trying to learn as much as I can from this process and see what kind of stuff I can make. Because what I wanna do is play with spots. Um, I wanna see if I can get some nice round spots um, in these patterns, but I've noticed that this is so thin it wants to run everywhere. And so if I just put my dots on there and then try and cover it with silicone, it'll run everywhere and it won't look anywhere near like what I want. So I've got an idea about putting some of this down first as a base, real thin, and then putting my dots in it and seeing if, if they'll hold, hold their place. So we're going to try that. I'm going to use a brush here to kind of even this out. And I'm just trying to get a little base for it to start on. We're gonna let that kind of flow a bit. And then we'll mix up something for our spots. I'm gonna use black. It's almost like that. You see how I drop it in there and it kind of stays put? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Now, another thing I wanna try uh, in case this doesn't work is making my round pieces that I can like go ahead and put in there almost like slices of pepperoni on a pizza and so I've got a drill bit here that's got a, a shaft about the right size and so I push that down into my clay here and I'm gonna pour some of this black in there and let it set and then when I pull it out I should have a tube of black silicone that I can slice up and place in my mold. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some of that in there for later. You might see a little bit of residue in these. Um, I tried this experiment already once um, and I did video it, but apparently I mixed my silicone wrong and it just totally never did set up. So I cleaned them all out and I'm trying to recreate what I did the first time. Let's go ahead and pour the rest of this in the other two molds. Okay, based on experience, I know that I have something like an hour uh, before this silicone starts to set up to where I can't work with it. So I'm gonna let this set for a minute and let those three molds kind of settle wherever they're gonna settle so that they're not oozing around in there. And then we'll come back and we'll try and add some spots and stripes and those sorts of things. While we wait for that, I'm gonna mix up some more silicone and we're gonna do another experiment with some blending. So let me pour up another little bit here. I'm gonna try and do a two color blend is what I wanna do on this one. I'm gonna do some black and blue. Let's look at some of this color shift powder. I like that dark blue. We're gonna put some of that in there. I'm not gonna put much in there. One little baby scoop there, just that. Oh yeah, cause that's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot, but man, that is a cool color. And then blue. And 
and then black again. All right, I don't even know if I'm gonna use that for anything, but I felt like it could come in handy. So I'm just gonna put a little skin coat in there. I'm gonna start with some dots. Now I've got these industrial syringes here. See if that makes it easier to apply or not. See, these are, um, what are these? Five milliliter, 15 gauge. All right, I got a little black in there. Let's, uh, let's see if we can do some stripes here real easily. All right, then I'm gonna try and put a few spots here with the syringe. All right, there's not much more to do but wait, so I'll come back to you after this has had a time to set up. Hey guys, I've got something a little bit different for you today. One of the best things about lure making is this wonderful community we've got of lure makers and fishermen. And I've had the privilege of talking to many of you online. As you know, I'm on Instagram as well as YouTube. I really appreciate all the comments and questions and tips that y'all have given me. Anyway, lately I've been in contact with a guy that specializes in rat lures. His name's Sack Pig, and you can check him out on Instagram. I'll put a link to all his stuff uh, in the description. But we've been talking back and forth for a while now, and we even did a lure swap. I sent him an unpainted gator, uh, which he has painted, and uh, in exchange he was going to send me some stuff back. So uh, I do have that package now, and we're going to open it and see what we've got here. This is the lure blank I sent over to him to paint. I made a couple of small improvements to this one that I think are worth sharing. I went on ahead and epoxied in the line tie and then all three hook hangers. So those are permanently epoxied into place, but then all of my hinge joints here are just sort of uh, slip fit into the holes for now so that you can disassemble the whole thing. But what you'll see is that these four hinges right here are much bigger than these last two right here. Uh, and the reason for that is I'm uh, trying to get a little bit more articulation out of this thing. And I'll show you what I've got so far but that just gives you a much bigger range of motion. Um, I did go ahead and ballast it. I put a little bit of weight here in this front section just to make it sit in the water properly, but it does appear to flip over correctly. So I think that's in good shape. Most of your ballasting is gonna come from these large hooks and split rings. I did not add a lip to this one because I feel like it doesn't need it. I did that experiment with one and um, it actually swam better uh, without it. So I think the biggest thing is to get a little bit more articulation out of it, which this one is much, much better uh, than any of the others that I've done. So let's get in there. Y'all don't know how hard it was for me to wait to open this, but I wanted to share it with y'all. He said he was going to send me this gator and I'm really excited because I wanted to see what it looked like in person. Oh, awesome. There's like all kinds of really cool colors in there. I see some like iridescent colors popping through. That is really cool. He also sent me a little bit of video that he took. Uh, I'll roll some of that into here as well.
he did an amazing job painting this. I'm really impressed by that. Okay, that's not all. There's some other stuff in here as well. Check it out. That's really cool. We'll have to find a prestigious place to put that. Lots of stuff down in there. Wow. A couple of smaller ones as well. Now I feel bad because I only sent him one decal. <laughs> and also a Bass Loves Rats decal. Really cool. I'm really excited about this. This is, this is one of his rats. With even more decals. <laughs> Let's open this up. I gotta see this. So it looks like we got here uh, a couple of different tail options. A uh, natural colored tail and then a chartreuse tail and then he's got one of his like rattle balls uh, booty shaker that you can put on there as well. There's a really cool new podcast out there called Made to Cast and uh, he did an interview on that. You should check that out as well. I'll put a link to it also below. Oh. But it talks about his, that's amazing. It talks about his process and how many iterations of this um, rat lure that he's gone through. And I tell you what, he puts a lot of research into these rat lures and I can't tell you how excited I am to get this out on the water. But he's got a new painting technique that he's been working with, this Damascus. It's got a crazy amount of movement to it too. That is a huge range of motion. <laughs> I'm gonna put a tail on there. I think I'm gonna do a chartreuse tail. See so y'all can see this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I wanted to bring this over to the table here so that we could take a closer look at it. You can see the Damascus effect that he's got on here his, uh, with his paint. But if you look closely, there's also this green iridescence, but it's not like overpowering. It's really subtle. That's cool. Oh, you can really see it here on the belly. Look at that. He's got his cool uh, logo on his eyes. Look at that. That's a really nice touch. I like that. You can see here, it's got a really nice sturdy lip. So you're very unlikely to break that. He's got a solid ring here on the front instead of a split ring. And then if you look here on the hooks, these hook hangers uh, are swiveled. So the fish won't be able to use the mass of this lure to wrench itself free. It'll just keep spinning and spinning. And then there's this uh, joint here in the middle with just a massive amount of movement in it. Huge range of motion there. It's got this screw in it to hold on the tail. But I also wanted to show you this other stuff here. So. Here's another tail. It's a little bit more of a natural look. And he's also got these two pieces here. This is so that you can uh, change the tail out for this rattle ball. It makes a huge amount of noise. So he 3D prints these and uh, fills them with some sort of rattle material. But it's really interesting. He developed these apparently uh, after he'd been fishing for a while with these. He keeps losing these tails. Apparently bass will sometimes target the tail and try and, I guess, pull the rat under and, and drown it rather than just eating it whole. A big thank you to Sack Pig for sending this. I really appreciate it and I'm excited to get it out on the water. If y'all would please check out his stuff. He's got some really amazing posts and uh, the work he does is stellar. So I highly recommend y'all check him out. But besides all that, he's a super cool guy and I've really enjoyed talking to him. Oh, that's pretty cool. This one we're not done with yet. We're gonna we're gonna add to it now that it's all set up. And uh, these three, I think I'm gonna try and add a little bit more to them. You can see that my striping pattern didn't really do what I wanted it to do there. It kind of spread out, and so did all these spots. Um, not that it's a bad thing. It's still a cool look. It's just not what I was looking for. Pulled the first one out. Let's get the others out. I'm excited about this. I think this has the most potential for what I'm trying to achieve with the spots.
And then maybe we can just place these around in the right places. And we'll pour another layer over it and see what, not that one. And we'll pour another layer over it and see what, uh, see what that looks like. I'm gonna make some orange. And a little bit of red here. So mostly yellow with a little bit of red would have worked much better. Well, I don't think I'm gonna be able to salvage that. Okay, how about we just put a lot more red in there and we'll make it a red. Well, we'll do something else with that. Let's try that again with this last little bit I've got. I put white in there because I feel like it gives it a little bit of body and takes away some of that opaqueness. I could be completely wrong about that, but that's just kind of what it feels like to me once I put it in there. I feel like it's just a lot more vivid color. I'm getting some orange there. My thought on that is uh, maybe I could do some sort of a clownfish uh, type fin or uh, maybe even a koi or something like that. All right, well, there's some orange, some red. But I'm very hopeful that I get some really sharp um, dots and spots out of it. Let's see if we can pour a thin stripe of red and then a thin stripe of black. Ooh, maybe that's not so thin. Ugh. <laughs> that's not all that thin actually. Let's try, let's try to go. Man, I just cannot get the light touch on that. I went ahead and made some white as well to complete that clownfish koi color that we're going to try. Let's make it kind of splotchy like a koi and not try to be super precise with it. Let's just do some like splotchy colors. With a splotch of orange. Then maybe a little white right here. A little black right here. Mm, a little orange here. Yeah. And then here I've got a plastic tray that all of that um, mica powder came in. And I'm just going to pour the remainder of my colors into those. Because I think I might have some ideas for how to use that. This has had time to set up, so let's see what we've got here. Oh, that's different than what I thought it was going to look like. I thought it was going to be a little bit more like this side. Not that it's bad. It's very interesting. I'd like them to be a little bit more um, separated like this is, but it may just come down to the technique of our pour. So we might try that one again and see what we get, but that's still pretty interesting. Uh, okay. I think what I need to do is pour a thin coat of just clear silicone then put my dots and then put blue. So I think the dots look really nice and crisp, except for that, that coating that we have on there, but I think we're on the right track. Oh, we got a little bit of flashing there again, not a bad look. It's just not what I thought it was going to look like. I do have an idea for getting some really crisp stripes and I'm going to, I'm going to try those today.
So that's a little more stripey. It is still kind of washed out a bit, but it is a little bit more of a solid stripe. Kind of blending in with the yellow a little bit there. I did get online and I found some other pigments that are neon, but they won't be here till tomorrow. So we'll have to, we'll have to roll those in later. But uh, for today, we'll keep trying to uh, get a better pattern. And now this is the one where we just did some drops in there. And they are pretty much washed out there. So that method's not great for just getting some spots in there, but if you wanted to do kind of a faded modeled look, that is not too bad of a technique. So all we're doing right here is experimenting with different things. We need to log these away in our brain um, for the future because all these different techniques will give us different uh, tools in our toolbox. Ooh, look at that. That's a cool look. You know, if you were doing something like a, um, a pike. For our next little round of things to try, I've already sliced up our uh, little cylinder there to make more spots. And then I've got our little sheet of extra that we had, and I'm gonna cut some strips. If you wanna support the channel and look good doing it, you can now get your official Zimtex merchandise. Just click on the store tab or the link to my website in the video description. There you can find everything Zimtex, including gear, links to the products I use, and other cool stuff. I've got a couple of colors here I want to try. Um, I'm going to do violet with some purple glitter and some purple mica powder, some color shift purple. So we'll do that in one. And then the other one, I'm gonna do some yellow or mango with some gold glitter and some gold mica powder. Yeah, a little bit of that mica powder goes a long way. I don't think the video is doing it justice, but in real life, that's amazing. All right, on this one, we're going to try putting a real thin layer of clear in there, and then we're going to put our dots in. Let's just let that one cure for now. And then this next one's going to be the exact same thing, except with stripes. I mixed up another batch of black, white, and orange to try to do another koi fin. The only difference is I've waited longer. This has been sitting for an hour and 43 minutes. Um, I've done some testing in the past on this and it starts getting pretty thick between an hour 45 and an hour 50. It's That seems to be the zone where it starts to set up for me here. Um, it is a little bit cooler today, so that might make a big difference. And also the quantity that I've mixed is bigger than the, the test I did before. But I can stir it and feel it's a little bit thicker. So my theory on that is if it's a little bit thicker when I pour it in there, it has less time to, to blend together. And it should give me a little bit more crisp color uh, separation.
This particular batch of silicone has been sitting for two hours and 30 minutes. Now it is a little bit chilly in here, so that probably is slowing it down, but it's starting to get kind of thick here. And so I'm gonna try doing some like brush work maybe. Okay, these have had plenty of time to set up, so let's um, pull them out of there and see what we got. So yeah, I think that is a lot closer to what I was wanting to do. Yeah, I feel like uh, letting that set up a little bit longer before I pour it into the into the mold made a made a big difference. I'll have to wash that one a little bit, but yeah, see, same same deal. Yeah, it has actually been a couple of days since I've made any progress on these fins because I've been waiting for these fluorescent pigments to come in. There's been some shipping delays, but we have them now. And what I've got is some of this smooth on ignite fluorescent pigments, which uh, look really bright. They're pretty awesome. I'm excited to try that. But I also got some fluorescent powder. You can see there's a lot of different uh, colors of that too. I, I guess this is gonna be a little bit similar to mica powder. I don't know what the difference is. Both of these products say that they can be used with silicone, so um, here's hoping. Okay, I'll tell you what I wanna do first. We're gonna do kind of a head-to-head -head of this lemon yellow powder versus this neon yellow uh, liquid pigment. It's a little clumpy, but we're going to try and stir it in real good. Looks pretty clumpy, so let's stir that up real good. Okay, let me tell you about this next idea I've got. So, you remember we made the cylinder out of the black and then we cut them into little slices and we're using those for dots. I really don't see any reason why you couldn't cut any shape you wanted. Uh, you could cut letters or a logo out of a piece of this stuff and place it in there and, and um, make a custom image on there, but I'm also wondering if we could use a marker and write on this and then put maybe a, a thin skim coat on there and get the same effect. Okay, so then I'm gonna put this back in that mold face down and that should just put a clear skim coat on this that will protect all of that ink. I'm tapping from one end to the other and I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any bubbles in there. I wanna do some more neon colors. So I'm going to do kind of a blend here. I'm gonna do pink and blue, which are both pretty fluorescent looking colors and uh, we'll do a multicolored fin.
That's great. I didn't press record, but uh, I got this all mixed up and I got it put in my silicone here and I was just remarking how I was trying to figure out what color it was because it's not really red. It's not really orange. It almost has a little bit of a pink look to it. It's bright, whatever it is. Okay, we're gonna let these set up, but I'm really excited about this batch and see how it comes out. So I'll get back to you after a while. Let's see what we got. I think it's been long enough. Let's go ahead and... It's so bright, you can't hardly even see it, but yeah, it is, it is bright, I'll tell you that. Ah. Uh, well, we did get a bubble in there. Hmm, those didn't bond together. It does kind of make the pattern cloudy, and for some reason it didn't bond, which is unusual. Okay, well, now you know. Ooh, we did get a little bit of redemption here. That turned out pretty cool. They did bond. They're not like pulling apart. Oh, that one tore up just a little bit. For the most part, they bond, but that one little piece tore just slightly there. Also turned out pretty nice. Good bonding. Nice. Yeah. A little bit more faint, not as clean, but just a different style. Oh, wow. That looks really cool in person. Oh, yeah. Neat. That's really neat. I like that. This is just sort of like a swirl type. Maybe not swirl, but just random, I guess you might say. That looks really cool. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so I can make more of the content you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.